السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مسجد جی ان دا لاسٹ فیو ویکس وی ویر ڈسکسنگ حضرت رحمۃ اللہ علیہ ایکسپلینیشن آف دا آیت کریمہ ومن یتق اللہ یجعل له مخرجا دیٹ پرسن او دوز پیپل ہو اڈاپٹ تقوا دین اللہ تعالی ول فائنڈ اے وے آؤٹ فار دیم بٹ دا تقوا ہیز ٹو بی وت اخلاص اینڈ وت صدق ایز وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ اوور دا لاسٹ ویکس سو حضرت رحمۃ اللہ علیہ از کنکلوڈنگ دیٹ پارٹ آف دا آیت So he mentions that what do you understand? He's asking, so what do you understand now from the whole explanation? What do you understand? You have come and seated yourself over here. But what have you really understood? So let me repeat. What is Haq Ta'ala saying? What is Allah Ta'ala saying? I shall maintain you as a muttaqi until death. Allah Ta'ala is saying that I will maintain you as a muttaqi, as one with taqwa till death. Seeing that you, mu'mineen, have adopted taqwa with ikhlas and sirq. You have brought this taqwa into your life with ikhlas, with sirq. So I will now maintain you. We only think that وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَا Our thinking is, is very, very limited. No, so we got taqwa, so Allah Ta'ala will take us out of all our problems. Whatever dunyavi problem we got, Allah Ta'ala will take us out of the problem mm-hmm. if we adopt taqwa. Right? But see what, how Hazrat Ji Rahmatullahi is explaining this. So he says that, I shall maintain you, Allah Ta'ala is saying, I shall maintain you as a muttaqi until death. I shall keep you as such. This is my promise. Right? Should you slip up by chance, a person is normally a muttaqi person, and now he erred, he made some mistake, he slipped up, I won't let you stay down. I won't leave you down. Should you transgress, then that procedure will take place whereby there will be a retraction and compensation. <laughs> so till death will I keep you as a muttaqi you O mu'mineen will return to me as a muttaqi because you were sent to earth with taqwa so having returned with taqwa here is jannat waiting for you you have come back with this taqwa here is jannat waiting for you this is your home there is no censure here There is no reprimand, there is no punishment, no torment. Yes, I will question you, I will question you slightly out of muhabbat. I will question you out of muhabbat to bring some happiness to your heart. Some questions are put to you. So Hazrat Rahmatullahi is asking again, he said, do you understand? Do you understand the promise made by Dhati Bari Ta'ala to the slave who lived in a state of bondage and in a state of being a muttaqi mu'min? Hmm? Allah Ta'ala will never go against His promise. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran Sharif, Inna Allah la yukhliful mi'ad. Allah Ta'ala will never go against His promise. So beautifully, Azaji Rahmatullahi ended this explanation of His of the first part of the ayat. Now we come to the second part of the ayat, wherein Allah Ta'ala says, وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِ And Allah Ta'ala will provide for him, for who the muttaqi mu'min, Allah Ta'ala will provide for him from sources he never expected. From sources he never expected Allah Ta'ala will provide for him. So now, here again, our thinking is that now the money will start pouring in. I've got taqwa, so 
So now the money will pour in. From different avenues, my rosy will start coming. But there is a deeper meaning to the ayat. So now, the second aspect has also come in concerning the stomach. As the Jirahmatullah is saying, concerning the stomach. That with regards to the stomach, fill it. Stomach has to be filled, not over full. It has to be filled, but subject to the laws specified by Allah Ta'ala. Let there be no hirs, tama, greed, avarice. This must not be easy. Right? So Hazrat Rahmatullahi is asking, he says, are hirs and tama not harmful qualities? Hmm? They are very, very harmful. To have greed, avarice in, in a person is extremely harmful. The person afflicted with these qualities has no peace of mind. He cannot achieve repose. All the time he is spurned on. His mind is working. Do this. No, I need to do that. I need to get involved in this. Right? I need to now do it this way. I need to do it that way. If there is inheritance, how I can rob the others? Right? If it's a partnership, how I can pull the wool over my partner? Some property deal, how I can do something this way, that way? The person can be running a madrasa also. Nice, you know, the madrasa funds now, what can I do with it? If there is hirs, there is tama, how can I? do something here with the Marissa funds also, embezzle. Hmm? That person, how come he means so much? So now I need to see now what he is doing. I must also do that. Right? I must also accumulate. There is no thought given to what is jais, what is not jais. No thought is given at all. I just need to make. There is no concern of what belongs to him or what belongs to others. He must just take. Hirsutama spurs him on to become like this. All the time he is. There's no rest. He's got no rest at all. His mind is working, active. So I don't know how to pronounce this word. So I asked one of the students, you know. So he told me, Marana, what? what you told me? If you say it confidently, no one else will. He said, no, just, he gave me one, one pronunciation. He just say it confidently, nobody else will know the word to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> what you told me? Stitch nine. Stitch nine. Stitch nine. But now we've got doctor here, we've got, they'll know now all these things. So, stretch 9 is some type of a poison. So, Hazrat Rahmatullah is saying, it is like taking stretch 9. <coughs> By ingesting it, a person will definitely cause difficulties, definitely cause problems for himself. He will harm himself internally. His inside will be harmed. Therefore, O Muttaqi Mu'min, the, these qualities within you that cause harm, See, this is the meaning of the ayat. وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ That Allah Ta'ala will provide for him from sources unknown. Now we think sources unknown, that I'm going to go deep sea fishing and catch one fish and all of a sudden I want to find gold coins inside. I'll go and buy one motor car and the previous owner forgot his bag of Kruger coins in the, where the spare wheel stays and I'll find one, one kupa there, you know of Kruger coins. Hmm? Our mind goes like that now. Hmm? It will come in all these different, different kind of ways, you know. And sometimes it can happen like that also, you know. I, I'm looking at Uncle Babu and I'm just re remembering one trip we made, you know. So, there was another 
family from Dubai that joined us. We are going to UK. So, now unbeknown to me, now I'm on the airport there. So this brother came to me and he said, Marana, where's your boarding pass? So I gave him a boarding pass. He said, no, an APA's boarding pass. He said, okay, there's a boarding pass. So he took the boarding pass. He gave me another two boarding pass. He said, now, uh, from now onwards, you must respond to Mr. and Mrs. Jassat. He said, no, don't worry. You keep this boarding pass. You respond to Mr. and Mrs. Jassat. So, so all right. What happened? He said, don't worry. Just take this thing, carry on. So now we went, went inside the aeroplane. They put us in the first class. So he went away in whatever we were booked in, he, and he had that, uh, what you call, upgraded him or something to first class. He said, no, 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 you go there. So Allah Ta'ala can give you rosy like that, you know, you can come like that. But we, our minds only think like that, this will happen, this will happen, Allah Ta'ala will give rosy in some other way. Hmm? I'll be digging foundation for my house, I'll find one hidden treasure or something. Look at the explanation given. Look, because look, those things are not in our control. Those things are not in con our control. For our business to become busy, is that in our control? It's not in our control. Right? To have a windfall is not in our control. None of those things are in our control. To hit it big is not in our control. Right? So look, look at what Hazrat is saying. Therefore, O, o Muttaki Mu'min, these qualities within you, which qualities? The qualities of Hirs or Tama, greed and avarice, these qualities within you that cause harm will be removed from you in such a manner that your thoughts will not even stray in that direction. The greed will be out. The avarice will be out. And instead, Allah Ta'ala will bless the person now with the quality of kanat, contentment. Now, even if he is having the crust of a loaf of brown bread, he is content. Alhamdulillah. That's the greatest wealth. Allah has provided for him from sources unknown. He doesn't need anything else. Whereas, what did Nabi Akareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? That insan, he got one value of gold, he wants two. A person will have two values of gold, now he's thinking, no, but if I have the third one, then I'll be alright. Today was uh, voting, you know. So I remember Hazrat Manispatiya Sahib Rahmatullahi mentioned something with regards to this voting thing. So he said one, one person, one president of one country, so he was standing for election for the third time round, you know. Two terms he served and I was standing for the third time round. So in his campaign, he mentioned to the, whoever, his audience, he says, see, this time round, you will better vote for me. He said, because understand something, when a president is voted in the first time, First term is lining his own pockets. Right? If he gets voted in for the second term, he's lining his friends and his family's pockets. Right? If he gets voted in for the third time, now he start worrying about the community. Because he finished lining his pockets, his friends and family's pockets, now he start worrying about the community. So he says, see now I finished past the first two stages. So if you are vote for anybody else, that person still has to line his own pockets. Then he's, I'm not telling you to vote for it. You finish it. Gee. So this is how insan is. You know, it's never enough. It's never ever enough for us. You're always thinking how to get more, how to get more. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, وَلَيَّمْ لَا أَفَاهُ إِلَّا تُرَوْ Nothing will fill him except the sand of the grave. When the sand of the grave now goes on him, then bus, enough, now, now, 
Now even if he wants to do anything more, he can't do anything more. He can't do anything more. But if Allah Ta'ala gives that person qana'at, contentment, and our old people had this qana'at, the older people, there are a lot of qana'at in them. You would find Allah Ta'ala bless them with one house. If how you remembered that granny's house as a child, when you got married and you brought your wife and came, the house was still the same thing. The same house, the same cow, same uh, petty, everything was there. Today we got no kanat. All the time we change. The paint color is not right. The curtain now needs a change. The kitchen needs a revamp. I'm not talking about where it really needs it. I'm talking about just just to keep up with the times or just for a change. Hmm? You know, the garden now we need to need to change things around. Hmm? There's no contentment, whether it's in our dressing, whether it's in anything that we do, we are not content. In our eating too, we're not content. In our eating too, we're not content. Right? And our woman folk in their cooking too, they're not content. I mentioned this thing. This, the older people will tell us, I mean, if the family had to ask them, what do you want to eat today? So if he said, make chicken, it was understood now. Maybe he'll get asked the question, uh, was roti or rice? Hmm? Maybe that question will come. But today it's gone very difficult to answer the question. If if you say you want to eat chicken, so you want it wet or dry? <laughs> or, or in the middle? Not too wet, not too dry. You know? Then you want it adega? <laughs> you want it this thing? You want it that thing, that kind of spice, this kind. By this, that one chicken, what, what we did to it, man. So many different things we did to it because we're not content. We're not content with just eating that. And the lady is not content with just cooking the same thing. Yet, my Sharadi Allah Ta'ala Anha, what she said. That the, the stove wasn't lit for three moons. And what we ate? Aswadan. Water and dates. Every day, same thing, water and dates. I'm not saying we can do that, but we're very far. We can't do that. Let's not fool ourselves. We can't do it. Right? But let's see where we're going. We'll have a whole kitchen full of things to eat, two, three mortuaries in the house. Right? Grocery cupboard, no mostly code name freezer. So, so many things we got there. Uh, what are we going to eat today? No, let's eat out. There's so much in the house. But we're not content with everything that's there. If you have to open the freezer, you'll find mutton, you'll find chicken, you'll find fish, you'll find everything inside there. But uh, if you're eating something out, there's no contentment. And then you can't have enough takeaways in restaurants. Because even if you eat out, then the eating out becomes so often that now we bought of this takeaway and bought of that one. Now when you eat on that one, the new one open, we must go eat there. This one open, we must go eat here. So there's no contentment. No contentment. I'm just, I'm just speaking in one aspect of our life. One zarura to eat. Just in that one aspect of our lives, there is no content. So, Hazrat Rahmatullah is explaining that when Allah Ta'ala is saying He will provide for you from sources unknown, for some people Allah Ta'ala may open the doors of Rosi. But to get a lot of wealth is not in our control. Allahu yabsutu rizqa. Some people Allah Ta'ala will give them Lord Rosie, some Allah will give them less Rosie. So does it mean that every person would less Rosie? So, so he doesn't have taqwa. 
Because Allah is saying, if you got taqwa, then He provide for you from sources unknown. Doesn't mean that. It means Allah will give qanaat. Whether the person is wealthy, whether the person is just making ends meet, whatever the situation is, Allah will give qanaat. Allah will give contentment. And if he's got contentment, he got everything. He got qanaat, he got everything. Have you understood the point or not? You have taken a tasbih, you have seated yourself, and even earned the name tasbihwala. I'm not saying you. I'm reading what Razaji is saying. I'm just addressing me also. What I have explained is the actual detailed and proven tasbih. Hir sotama are harmful qualities. Kanaat is a beneficial quality. Allah Ta'ala is saying, O Muttaqi Mu'min, I will create within you such a methodology that the harmful qualities of Hirs and Tama will be removed and the beneficial quality of Kanaat will replace these. If you are a real Muttaqi Mu'min, then your gaze will not go to the means. Your gaze will not go to the means. If your gaze does fall on the means, it is only for usage. The gaze goes on the means only for usage. Hmm? Not that I'm trusting on the means. No, it's only for usage. And not with the concept that the means will bring me success. Success only Allah can give me. Hmm? Only my Allah can give me success. And I'll only find it in deen. Hmm? The Jamaat brothers, wherever they go, one yana, my success, your success, success of entire mankind, is in what? Hmm? Following the commands of Allah Ta'ala, as taught to us by Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's no other success. Hmm? There's no other success. Hmm? So if the gaze goes on the means, it is only for usage. And if a person has that that he is using this means because Allah Ta'ala made it the means. Then his utilization of the means is also ibadat. He is using the means. The man is going to work. He is going to work only because Allah Ta'ala has made that the means of his risk. So then he is going to work is also ibadat. Provided He's running his business according to Sharia. He can't be making subkut under, maskal under, everything upside down, and he said, no, you bother the time Allah said, I must earn rosy. He's going to earn his risk. Hazrat Rahmatullah used to say that that person standing on the side of the road and is calling customers to come and purchase his potatoes, onions, tomatoes, that is zikrullah for him. At that time, that is zikrullah for him. Provided his gaze is on Allah Ta'ala. He's using the means because Allah Ta'ala has made that the means. But his gaze is on Allah Ta'ala. And whatever Allah Ta'ala gives him at the end of the day, whether he sold one pocket potato, whether he sold nothing, whether he sold 100 pocket potato, he is content. He is content. Allah gives. When we talk about means, then sometimes we get so caught up in the means and every time we use the same argument. The reason you must use the means, then trust in Allah. So we're using the means but we're trusting in Allah. Hazrat explains this in one sentence. We, we did a whole majlis on this some time back, the different types of means, right? which means it is necessary for you to use, which means is permissible for you to use, which means is better for you not to use, and which means is haram for you to use. Hmm? So that's the whole discussion. I think we did it also with the uh, students in the, the one-year course. So, Hazriji says, however, the greater the amount of means used, Proportionately, the difficulties will increase. 
And you see this. You see this happening. The more advanced we are becoming with our security measures, the more advanced the criminals are coming with them breaking our security measures. You see it happens all the time. The more means we are adopting. We just have one burglary. Allah Ta'ala protected the house for 20 years. Right? Now you have one burglary, one something happened along my first name. Now we go so overboard with the security measures. So where is our case? Where is our case? Shouldn't we be thinking, but with the same security measures that I had, Allah Ta'ala protected me for 25 years. I didn't have no problem yet. Right? Okay, they broke this burglar guard here, yeah, I need to sort it out. My fence was falling down there, it's my own fault, I didn't maintain it, I didn't repay it. So they came in through days a week, spot, I sorted it out. But does that mean now, that because they got in one time, now I need to go and put one 10 foot wall, with one electric fence on the top, with one armed guard patrolling up and down, with one heavy camera system everywhere, on my phone, in my laptop, here, there. Hmm? Does it mean I have to now do so much of the means? So now, does it mean that everybody who got that means is safe? When people come to break into that kind of a home, then you hear some terrible stories. Because now, they get so now, so much more high tech and so much more. Hmm? And then they're not coming just to get one loaf of bread or steal some vegetable from the garden or one rake or wheelbarrow or something from outside. So the more we get too involved in the means. Now this is something you must always make mashwara. You must make mashwara because it's not something that is just a, you know, a simple rule. Right? In your own situation you must make mashwara. Right? That this means now must I use it, mustn't I use it, must I get involved in this, must I not get involved in that. But the greater the amount of means used, proportionately the difficulties will increase. If there is no kanaat, there will be no sleep either. This person will not be able to eat with freedom. He will have no peace of mind. He will not have a life of ease and comfort. It will be just the opposite. He will be running around like a headless chicken. <coughs> to repeat what Allah Ta'ala has said, وَيَرْزُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Allah Ta'ala will provide for him, for who? For the muttaqi mu'min. From sources he never expected. O muttaqi mu'min, in attaining your risk, I will create within you the methodology of removing another harmful quality and replacing it with a beneficial quality. This is my promise to you. Hmm? My methodology will encompass both your spiritual risk and your physical risk. Our gaze is only on the physical risk. Allah Ta'ala is saying this methodology will take care of your spiritual risk also. Right? I shall establish such methods, such avenues, such forms that will make you receive Bhatini risk. Bhatini means risk for your inside and batani risk for your stomach batani is stomach hmm? batani risk you get both batani risk and batani risk hmm? now see what is kanaat what is kanaat hmm? you go home and your wife made some dar some mug hmm? you eat it and Allah Ta'ala actually put enjoyment in it See, my Allah provided this rosy for me. You ate it and you are pleased. Allah gave me food. Right? It makes you happy. And, and you make a shukar to Allah Ta'ala for the ni'mat. Right? On the other hand now, you went to one ladida. You know, everybody was talking about this place. So now, you went there. And you paid this much also, you know. And you bought it. Hey... 
Eat a prawn, they not up to scratch, man. <laughs> and in the steak we eat them, it was two years, a bit two in it. So, all that you did, what you got out of it, you ate this meal, you're not happy. You spend so much money, the best of things in front of us, and we're not happy with it. Not happy. Allah Ta'ala gives a person a home. That home is protecting him from the heat outside, the rain outside, the cold outside. He's got a place to put his wife and his children. The only thing he can see is a crack. The only thing he can see is, oh, that plastering, it wasn't, wasn't too good. That brick layer, now he hey, hit a mess here, it will cook it. So, he's got a house supposed to give him peace. When he's looking at the house, he can only see floors. He spent millions. That other person, who in half an afternoon, he put up his shack, he had nothing, he found some zinc, he put up his shack and he said to his wife, hey, we want a shelter, he's happier. He's happier than this person who spent 10, 15 million, 20 million, the only thing he can see is flaws. I have to phone that fellow. I'm going to phone the engineer, I need to take off with him. I phone this fellow. Where is the happiness? Where is the kanat? Where is the contentment? Hmm? will bless us with this kanat, with contentment. Allah give us tawfiq. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanallah wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.